Hi, welcome to Let's Talk MacArthur. This month's bonus episode with Coleman Gregg Lawyers. And today we are very, very happy to be joined by Jacqueline Burke, uh, Associate with Family Law at uh, our very own Oran Park Podium. Hi, Jackie. How are you? Hi, Mark. I'm well, thanks. Thanks for having me on this morning. Oh, no, thanks for coming along. We've had uh, Andrew come along. We've had Lisa Barker come along. So it's it's nice to uh, to rotate a few of the uh, associates and partners through uh, and get them on to get some information across to the community, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. It's been good. So, so what are you bringing us today from Family Law? Uh, so I thought I would share uh, a little bit about um, what our team does. Uh, we're very... Um, lucky and I guess fortunate to be involved in in the MacArthur region and and have a presence here Um, but yeah essentially just sharing uh, with you and um, the listeners about the various things we can we can offer in the the realm of family law. Sounds good and I know it's there's it's a it's a bit more than just thinking well when you have a a a divorce or a separation or or something like that there's a lot more to it with family law so why don't you take us, take us through some of those points? Yeah, so I think, um, Mark, you and I have talked before about what some common misconceptions are with, with family law practice. Um, I think there's often a thought that, you know, family law only really relates to people who, who want to get divorced, mm-hmm. um, and that's not always the case. So, so the work that we do on a day-to-day basis is quite far-reaching. Um, it can extend into uh, all the different areas of, of a person's life and at, at various stages in a person's life. Um, the most common uh, and, and perhaps the thing that first comes to mind is, is when a marriage breaks down and, and people want to get divorced. Um, the divorce is, is simply ending one's marriage, but there's all the different things that, that flow on from that, um, particularly if if uh, that couple has children, um, if they own property together, um, if they have child support considerations. Um, so it's it's quite far-reaching in terms of topics that you may find that you have to help people navigate through, but also process as well. There's lots of different ways to do things um, in, in our area of practice. Uh, not everything goes to court, and indeed we would often encouraged that that's not where we start it's it's often a last resort so it's quite diverse what what we do um and i think it's it's a big responsibility as well to to have people um you know come to you when they're in that really difficult stage of of their lives and uh that's that's a big responsibility and a high level of trust that's placed in us to help them through that yeah, and process was the word that I was going to ask you about because I, I know that you're a qualified mediator and arbitrator. Um, yeah. So that's a really important step before you end up in the in the court uh, room. Um, but that can be something that is um, uh, uh, guided by the court as well to, to go through that process. Yeah, and um, so we're very um, well-resourced, I guess, in that respect. We have a number of... Um, mediators and arbitrators that work within our team who are really, really experienced. Um, And it's certainly something that we uh, would encourage and the court actually mandates before you uh, go to court now unless there's uh, various exemptions that might apply or or urgency. Um, So it's knowing what your options are with process early on um, and if you're placed in a situation where you're in a dispute um, and and you don't really know what first step to take. It's really getting advice at that first point Mm. Um, and, yeah, weighing up those options, exploring mediation. Arbitration is a really good alternative to lengthy court processes where you can have an outcome um, decided by um, someone relatively quickly and cost-effectively. And um, so, th- yeah, there's lots of options to explore and, and we're happy to be bringing that full service offering to people in the car park. Which is great. It's a very stressful time uh, when yeah. people go through that. Uh, heightened yeah. emotions, you have to deal with, with that as well. 
Um, yeah, I, I think you can't become um, not desensitised to it, but you have to have a, a high degree of emotional intelligence. I think it's not something that um, I think you can, you have to be a bit genuine with it and, and have compassion for people and, and what they're going through. Yeah. Um, I certainly think with my practice and with my clients, it's something that um, I really, I guess, take an interest in in getting to know the people that I'm helping and supporting them and, and knowing what's going on in their life. So um, it's being emotionally aware, having the empathy and trying to put yourself in their shoes to know what they're going through and, yep. and to get them out the other side. That's that's the end. Yep. And, that, and that's pretty much the same for all of us in, in business now where we're dealing with, and, and you talk about property and obviously through R&W, we do the same. Uh, mm-hmm. And you, you do need to have, uh, it's the old adage of two ears and one mouth. You have to be a good listener and really understand uh, what it is that they're trying to achieve through the process. Mm-hmm. Um, even more complicated through your process because, as you say, if there are children involved and there's assets involved, you know, property, mm-hmm. et cetera, um, then you've got all these different branches, I guess, and mm-hmm. tangents to, to go down. Um, so how do you help them control uh, those one by one because it's, mm. it, it'd just be too much trying to do all of it at one time. Yeah. I look, I think it's really it's, it's really common where sometimes people will come to see me and, and say, look, I want to get a divorce or we've sold our house and um, we each took half the proceeds and we just want to get our divorce now. So it's um, helping people simplify the process, um, having that conversation with them up front to say really getting to know them identifying what their goals are and what they're wanting to achieve and essentially giving them some information that they can either take away if they want to do things themselves we encourage that and arm them with the information to do that Um, and if they need our assistance even if it's for one discrete aspect of, of their matter um, simplifying that and giving clients the knowledge so that they can make informed decisions about what to do. Yeah, which is good. Mm-hmm. So resources that are available to people to, to be able to look at uh, on the family law side, where, where do they go to a uh, contact you or your team or, or actually have a read about what uh, what resources Common and Greg have got for them? Yeah, so, we, um, so we're on our website is probably the first point of call. Um, there's lots of information on there about our team, um, about everyone's interests and, and what their particular, um, not even skill set, but uh, we, we have quite a large team and um, each of us have little um, pockets, I guess, of things that we might specialise in. So um, we've got some members who do mediation and arbitration, others who do adoption and surrogacy work. Um, and even assisting with ADPOs and crime um, right, yep. in the family law context. So um, jump on our website, um, have a look around. We've got blogs on there if you want to arm yourself with information without making contact necessarily straight away. Yep. Um, but also um, feel free to jump on our Facebook page. We're on Facebook. Um, and, yeah, otherwise get in touch with me and I'm, I'm happy to try and assist anyone that needs some help. Yep, uh, Colin and Greg have a uh, good LinkedIn page too, so you can go there also. Um, and offices, uh, let me get this right, so it's Oran Park, Parramatta, the city, and Penrith as well? Yes, and Norwest. And Norwest, yeah, yes. so ever-expanding. Um, yes. So lots of resources available through there. Uh, what, what happens uh, when people are faced with these matters during the Christmas holiday period? Um, yeah. yeah, so... Um, it's a little bit of a rush sometimes this time of year for us. Um, so I guess particularly with parenting matters, it's it's not uncommon for uh, Christmas to be an occasion where children want to see both mum and dad and, and try and do that with as little as um, as little conflict as, as possible. Um, so I think if you are having difficulties or anticipate having difficulties, um, jump on the phone, 
or jump online well before Christmas. We're about a week and a half out now. Um, but if you don't have uh, that time available to you and you want to try and navigate it yourself, um, I would recommend that you um, think about parenting matters from um, the child's perspective. So everything will be looked at with the child's best interests as first and foremost consideration. Um, communication is key. Um, so trying to keep the communication as um, respectful and child-focused as possible. Um, but if you need any additional assistance, feel free to jump on the phone or email and get in touch. Great words and great advice, Jacqueline. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas um, yes, and you. that 2022 is one that we can all look forward to with uh, plenty of enthusiasm. So I know I certainly am, uh, which yes. is going to be great. Uh, enjoy some good family time um, and uh, I'll get to catch up with you next year. Absolutely. Same to you, Mark. Thanks, Thanks Jackie. Cheers.